All right, well, Ms. Watkins, we're going to start right now. I, I, I want to first note that you did, I, under, I understand you did several internships as a grad student at NASA. Did you ever think you'd be sitting here wearing that uniform with a mission on your schedule? Oh man, it is, it is a, a true blessing and an honor to be in this position. Um, I certainly always really enjoyed all of my internships and the exposure that I got with NASA and, and uh, dreamed of just being a part of the NASA mission, the NASA team, the Ma NASA family. Um, and to be able to do so in, in this role in this way is just super exciting. You're in a business where there's a pretty long windup from the time you're selected as a trainee until you actually get to go up. I think you started training and were selected in, in 2017. What has the anticipation been like to finally get your chance to strap into a rocket and go up? Yes, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, preparing for this moment and, you know, we spend a lot of time doing simulations and, um, for, for lack of a better term, kind of pretending to do the real thing. Um, so it's, it's, it's really exciting and really, really um, cool for us to be able to actually put all of that work into practice and uh, to go up there and, and see the real thing. Uh, so it's, it's definitely been years of preparation um, that we're, we're looking forward to putting, putting those into application. So tell us about your mission, what you plan to, to do, or what you were be expected to do on the space station. Absolutely. So for our Crew 4 mission, uh, the, the four of us, myself, uh, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, and Samantha Cristoforetti, uh, will be up on the International Space Station for around six months. And uh, one of the major things that we do while we're up there is science. Uh, the ISS is a national laboratory, and uh, we get to, to take advantage of its capabilities. Uh, we do lots of different kinds of science while we're up there. Uh, we do physical science, so material science, combustion science, um, earth and space science, which is uh, my personal favorite. Uh, we do biology, so looking at cell tissue and plant growth. Um, and then as well, we do um, technology demonstrations to prepare us for the future and human human uh, research as well. Uh, so looking at the effects of long duration space flight on human uh, you know, physical effects as well as our cognitive effects. Uh, so that will be one big portion of what we do up there. The other big portion is maintenance. Uh, so the International Space Station um, has a long legacy and we want to help continue that legacy. Um, we've just been extended to 2030 um, to have the ISS up there. We're really excited about that and we want to make sure that the, the ISS is, is up for the task. Uh, so we'll do lots of kind of exchange, changing batteries, um, those types of tasks, both inside and outside as well. Uh, so those are the extra, extravehicular activities or the spacewalks um, that you may have seen in the past. Um, that's essentially doing maintenance on the outside of the station. Um, one one uh, EVA, as we call them, that we're looking forward to is helping to upgrade some of our solar arrays um, out on the edges of station. So we're really excited about that. And then the third part of our mission is sharing it with the world. Um, so the outreach and education piece of what we do, um, just to bring everybody with us and make sure that we're being uh, good representatives and good stewards. This mission has gotten a lot of attention because you will be the first African-American woman to serve on the space station. Do you see that as a barrier-breaking moment or just part of a natural progression? Yeah, you know, in, in some ways, I think it's it's almost both. And I, and I think that is what is exciting about it, is that um, we have reached this this milestone, this point in, in time. Um, and the reason that we are able to arrive at this time is because of the, um, the legacy of those who have come before to allow for this moment. And then also recognizing that this is a step in, in the direction of a very f exciting future. Uh, so to be a part of that um, is certainly an honor. Um, and I think that it is, it is both of those things um, at once. Is it also a teachable moment, an opportunity for you to teach to not only people of color, but women, uh, the importance of STEM and, and all the things that you had to put in to get where you are today? 
Yeah, you know, certainly for me, uh, growing up and throughout my career, um, it's been really important for me to see people who look like me or have uh, my background or similar experiences in the roles that um, I aspire to and contributing in ways that I aspire to contribute. Uh, so if um, in in, to the extent that I'm able to do that for others, for other young girls or young people of color, um, I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to return the favor. I understand that you're potentially on the track that would take you onto one of the upcoming moon missions. Uh, is that something you think a lot about, uh, actually walking on the moon and, and really be able to uh, leverage your expertise as a geologist? Yeah, exactly. For, you know, for me as as a geologist, a planetary scientist, um, the idea of going back to the moon as an agency and as an astronaut corps is super exciting. Um, certainly for myself it, as an individual, but also um, as a team to to think about the challenges and um, come up with the technologies and uh, push the bounds of the science that we can learn um, on the moon is just super exciting. Um, and I'm just just happy to be a part of it and, and can't wait to to be a part of that future. It, it feels to me like this is an especially exciting time to be in, in the space business. We're not only seeing missions like this by NASA, but as you know, uh, these civilian spaceships that have gone up recently. Do you get that sense that this is a, a really important time when it comes to space? Absolutely. Um, we are so lucky to be a part of human spaceflight right now in history. Uh, we have so many different types of vehicles that we're working on. As you mentioned, we are working with multiple partners, both our um, commercial partners, SpaceX and Boeing, as well as our international partners uh, that help us participate in the International Space Station. Um, and then in addition, thinking about going to different destinations, thinking about the moon and on to Mars um, as, as the next destination. It's just a, an incredibly exciting time to have so much uh, interest and, and public support um, for all these different endeavors that we're undertaking. It's, it's definitely busy around here, but it's also very exciting. And for our kid viewers, what sort of things should kids be working on right now that will put them on a track if, if they someday want to become an astronaut? Absolutely. For any any kids watching, I would say find something that you really enjoy, something that you're super passionate about that gets you out of bed in the morning and just pursue that relentlessly. Um, however, whatever opportunities you can find, after school programs, internships, NASA has a lot of those available, uh, any way that you can just really dig into that and uh, just put all of your effort towards it. Uh, that, is, that is the way to um, get to realize your dreams, um, particularly focusing on the STEM fields, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, in order to um, help with NASA in particular. But whatever it is that you love, just keep doing it. I, the, the thought of being six months anywhere can be a bit daunting, but certainly in space. I know you've been able to simulate um, uh, weightlessness, but do you find yourself wondering what it will be like to live in that environment for that long? Oh, of course. You know, we what, a lot of what we do here at NASA is to try to take out some of those question marks and uh, answer some of those variables. Uh, but ultimately, yes, this is, we are doing something that that few people have really done before. So we can uh, take note from from previous experience, talk to people who have been up there, and, and have them share their experiences with us. But of course, there will always be an element of it that is new, and I think that's what makes it so exciting and and so fun um, is that we get to we get the privilege of doing um, this this really um, kind of unique the unique experience the future astronauts who may be watching this do you think they can expect to have a chance to go to Mars someday absolutely you know I I Mars is particularly close to my heart. Um, my graduate work was on Mars in particular, and so the idea of getting to uh, send people there and get boots on the ground and actually pick up those rocks um, is super exciting. Um, I worked on the uh, Mars rover, the Curiosity Mars Science Laboratory rover, um, and just to see the images that come back um, from that rover and the samples that we were able to collect and the information we are able to gather from the surface of Mars 
years um, and that we're continuing to do with the, the Perseverance rover as well. Uh, just to be able to pair that with uh, actual uh, human beings as, um, uh, as field geologists on the surface of Mars uh, just, just is super exciting. So um, I really look forward to seeing uh, one of you who's watching today uh, stepping foot on Mars. And lastly, I'm, I'm told that on a clear night, if you know where to look, you can actually see the space station as it flies over. Have you caught it before? And, and what do you think when you, when you watch it from Earth? Yes, it is. There is a, a, a an app that you can get on your phone, or you can go online and and find when and where um, to look overhead and, and spot the International Space Station going by. And it's it's really a surreal experience to um, be able to look up and see part of humanity uh, passing overhead. You know, it's this small kind of light in the in the distance, but you know that there are seven human beings living and working up there, uh, pursuing science and um, helping us take steps towards the unknown. Um, and to be able, for me personally, to be able to know those people um, as my friends and colleagues, um, it's just it's just a, an overwhelming experience of of being. Uh, so far away, but still so connected. Yeah, what an amazing perspective. Listen, uh, congratulations. Uh, this is wonderful. We're so happy to be able to tell your story, and I think you'll be a, obviously a great example to a lot of, lot of folks. And hopefully we'll get to talk to you when you're up there uh, in the space station. But thanks for spending time with us. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to it. Okay.